Holy granola, the following program is Basket of Light Bulbs, half hour special, number one. Hit it! Billy was working at the potato chip factory and he didn't like it very much. And then one day he looked up in the sky and he said, whoa. Look at that. Oh my God. It's a hot air balloon. And then Billy got to thinking, maybe one day I'll be a hot air balloon guy. What? And then his friend Quasar was like, nah, man, you can never be one. But he did. All the ladies loved him for his hot air balloon antics. <laughs> Tanya was on her morning run through the woods when a squirrel jumped out of the bushes and tried to take all her money. She said, You stop it with all this nonsense, you dirty old scallywag. Well, the squirrel got his feelings hurt with the scallywag business, and so he went to the salon, and he washed up real nice. And the next morning, he jumped out of the bush again, and he said, You give me all your money, Tanya. And Tanya saw the poofy, shiny fur and said, I'll give you a dollar because you're so fancy, you good-looking squirrel. A dollar won't work for me, Tanya. I say what goes, Tanya. Now you give me all your money now! Give me all your money! It was one day on the bus when Weasel Man made up his mind. He had had enough with the life of crime fighting and turning into a weasel and then back into a man and then flip-flopping identities and whatnot. His time was up. He said, no more crime fighting. Weasel Man is done. And the people all looked at him and one lady said, done? Done with what? And then Weasel Man said, crime fighting. I am done. And the lady said, Oh, you fight crime? Great. And another guy said, What's a weasel man? And a weasel man said, I have been fighting crime for years, you ungrateful pieces of sh**! Listen, Pete. I'm, I'm done with the big show. I, I just can't do it anymore. Not without my Tony. It's time for me to go back to the sea. Let me tell you something, honey. The sea is for losers. You're out when I say you're out. You think I don't want out sometimes? You think my job isn't hard, sweetheart? Drafting important aquarium policies? Coming up with gimmick after gimmick? I got the board spelunking in the innards of my keista about how this seahorse exhibit doesn't have enough seahorses in it. <sighs> We're driving me crazy with the seahorses! My Tony, he's... He's dead. I just can't keep doing this. Give me a second. Give me that clipboard. Give me that cl I want to read something to you. Give me that. Would you give me the clipboard? Would you give me the clipboard? Okay? You, you're driving me crazy with the clipboard. I want to read it. I want you to give it to me. Look at this. Lena, look at this. Listen to me. You know what the board said when Tony died? I got it right here. You know what they said when Tony died? They said, get another Tony. I said, Tony? Tony who? Who needs a Tony? Lena's the big, bright, beautiful star now. The one with the scaly fins of gold. Now, you got a show at 2 o'clock, hun. Get out there and show them Tony was never good enough. I knew this wizard one time that liked to party down. Her name was Jackie, but people called her Fizzle. And that's because at the height of the party, she would yell out, Hey, everybody, I'm the Fizzle. And everybody would cheer because that meant that Jackie was proper drunk. But one day, this dude, Barry, he asked Jackie, he says, why, you know, why you call yourself the Fizzle? And she said, I'm the Fizzle because I say I'm the Fizzle. And then Barry said, you can't say you're the Fizzle because you're the Fizzle. That's the cutest logic and don't make no sense. That's like asking why the frog is green and you say the frog's green because the frog's green. And then Jackie zapped Barry with her wand 
and he turned into a giant ear of corn. And Jackie said, You're dead now, Barry. What about that? Does that make sense? Can you explain that? You asked too many questions, Barry. Too many questions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just slow down a second. Say that again, slowly. There was an alien at the grocery store. I, 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 I don't know. I was thumping some watermelons, trying to pick the right one, but I don't know how to thump watermelons. I just do it because I know you're supposed to thump them. And then I saw the alien. An alien? At the grocery store? Right, okay. Well, what happened? And he floated up to me and, 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 and I can't remember. I don't know what happened next. I think I know what happened. What happened? Um, someone has helped themselves to my Valentine's Day chocolates, and I am not at all pleased about it. I had them in the cavern in my personal quarters. There were 15 assorted truffles, each with its own unique filling, and now there are only nine. This means that someone stole six of my sweet treat delights. I don't want to name any names because I'm not that kind of person, you know. And I'm not going to threaten you by any means. I'm not going to punish you. I'm not going to tear your limbs off like from your torso like I did with Sebastian. I think we were all in agreement that I had crossed the line there. Look, <laughs> so if someone took my <laughs> chocolate, you would need to speak up now and explain yourself. <sighs> Who took my chocolate delicacies? Who was it you? was all over the house. It was really something. Uh, I was reminded of my journey to Kolkata uh, when I was being pulled by a cart of monkeys. It was really a You've never been to Kolkata? Uh, I most certainly have. You don't even know where Kolkata is. I know exactly where Kolkata is. Okay? Where is it? I know where it is. Mmm. Mmm. It's in France. It's in India. It's the Conjoin Buffalo Plaid Brothers Travel Ganza Show. Today we're at Bennington Castle in South Grizzle. Yeah, yeah, you ain't been to South Grizzle if you ain't been to Bennington Castle. That's a fact, Jack, because <laughs> Bennington Castle is jam-packed to the gills with mind-bending history. Yeah, yeah. See those windows behind me? See them? Stuff happened in there. What kind of stuff, you might ask? Yeah, yeah, you might be asking, like, what happened up there behind those windows and be like, I'm real curious and I want to know. Yes, 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 you might be real curious, curious as a little cat and want to know what happened. And that's why we're here to explain exactly what went down behind those windows. Let me guess. Guess away! Jousting lessons! Yes! Torture! Yes! 
Love making. <laughs> yeah. Strategizing battle scenarios and whatnot. Oh yeah. Yes. Wizards spinning their little hands around in the air to make portals to other dimensions and stuff like that. Yes. And that's just one window. Yes, and all of that was going on simultaneously. <laughs> At the same time. In the same room. You won't believe what happened behind the other windows up there. It's the conjoined Buffalo Plat Brothers Travel Guns Show. And uh, what bands did you see like in their prime before maybe they made it uh, in their prime? Uh, I saw the Miss Missies, I saw the Painters, I saw the uh, Wrenches, I saw the Painters again, I saw the Foo Foo's, I saw the Space Cadets, the uh, the Girl Scout Cookies, I saw the Lawn Mower, the, uh, I saw the Lawn Care Specialists, I saw the Carpet Baggers, they were good. Uh, let's see, let's see. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the band, you, you saw these guys live? <sighs> Of course, of course I saw them live. I saw the first shows ever. You weren't there. You wouldn't know. This is a crossover between uh, Christmas Vacation and Star Wars. This is Uncle Lewis, but with the Emperor voice. I think that someone should dub the Emperor voice over Uncle Lewis for a Christmas Vacation movie. That ain't the light of the Christmas star. It's the light of the sewage treatment plant. So it's a, it's a lamp. It's marked on no map, seen by no satellite. Hmm. So how in the heck am I supposed to find it then? Okay, what you're going to want to do, walk for five hours towards the Purple Mountain's peak. There... You're going to want to find the five-pronged cactus by the spiral of sandstone. Then you're going to want to whisper the words, magic lamps are for dreamers. Once you do that, then a skeleton of a turkey vulture will direct you to the entrance of the hidden canyon. Then you're going to want to flash the secret sign to the lizard man. If he lets you in... Follow the path to the Cave of Skeptics. In there, you will find a mystical tavern of interdimensional entities. Yep, that's right. Behind the bar is a goddess named Sorensen. Tell her you've come for the Lamp of Lamps. She'll know what you're talking about. I've come for the lamp of lamps. We ain't got no lamp of lamps. Okay, here's the plan. You ready for this? We go in, we slay the dragon, and then we go home. <laughs> you say that like it'll be easy. He used to be such a nice dragon. Uh, yeah, what happened? He used to roll around in the wheat fields and take naps. He's just gone crazy. I think he got the rabies. I don't think a dragon can get rabies. Only mammals can get rabies. Of course a dragon can get rabies. How would you know? I read it in a healer scroll once. What did it say? It said dragons can definitely get rabies. You are so full of crap. Should we rethink this plan? We can't just waltz in and slay a dragon. Oh lordy, especially a dragon with the rabies. A dragon can't get rabies, I'm sure of it. What made him become so mean, then? I guess he could have been possessed. Oh, possession. possession. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Think about possession. He's possessed. Possessed by rabies. Love is a whisper from a cloud in a dream. Your beauty is sunlight, a radiant gleam Seriously, I, you're beautiful yet I steal you away Call for seven, eight, nine, eight, three, two, today Serious, I would treat you like a what, 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 huh? What? Did you just hmm? hit on my fiance, Songwise? 
Uh, what? No. My God. <laughs> no. No. I play love songs. That's what they pay me for. Well, it sounded a whole lot like you were hitting on my fiance song-wise. Sir, these are old-fashioned standards, sir. There was a number in the song. How did it go? You're beautiful. You, uh, I'll steal you away. Call, what, well, four, seven, four, 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 seven, eight, nine, eight, three, two, today. You are crazy, man. You, <laughs> one, one second. Hold on. Hello? It's me. <laughs> You always look up to me. It's because I'm so tall. I look up to you metaphorically, too, though. Well, you shouldn't. Because I sometimes do bad things. Like what? Well, for instance, have you ever wondered how I got so big? How did you get so big? By eating things. What kind of things? Um, candy. I eat too much candy. And that's why you're bad? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm bad. Now get out of here, kid. You got something in your teeth. Everyone, welcome the newest member of our superhero team. He can disrupt digital signals, radio waves, and satellite transmissions with his flatulence. He calls himself Fart Jammer. No, oh, man, okay. <laughs> that doesn't uh, really work for me because if if you're Fart Jammer, then that means that you're like stopping the fart from happening. You you're jamming the fart. It's not like the other way around where you're trying to say that your fart's the thing that's jamming other things. It's the fart that's getting jammed here. No, no, it's not like that. It's that my farts disrupt the signals. You see, the molecular structure of my GI tract creates Yeah, a... yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. I'm just saying that not too many people are going to take it that way. See, look at me. Look at me go here. I'm Mr. Engine Exhaust Jammer Guy. Look at me jamming it. <laughs> I'm jamming it. I'm... I'm engine exhaust jammer. Get in it. Get in it. Get in it. <laughs> See? Look at me. Look at me. Don't go that way. That way leads to the road of doom. Oh gosh, the road of doom? What's the road of doom? The meaning is self-evident, son. Do I really need to explain it? Um, I guess not. I guess I'll go this way. No, don't go that way for Pete's sake! That way leads to the road of doom! You said that way leads to the road of doom. They both lead to the road of doom! <sighs> Fine. I'll go this way. I said no! No, <laughs> All right, we've been tasked to head up the marketing campaign for this super concentrated energy supplement. Comes in a vial, you squirt two drops in your drink, it's like having two cups of coffee. So let's get some ideas out on the table, people. How about drip drop? A little bit goes a long way. <laughs> kind of hack, don't you think? I got it. Hands down, this is it. Alert with the squirt. Oh. Oh, gosh. Sounds a little unwholesome, don't you think? What's unwholesome about alert with a squirt? Maybe it's the way you're saying it. It's growing on me. Trust me. If we go with 
alert with the squirt will be on the wrong side of history. I've been listening to this whole meeting behind that door. And I smell a smell. And that smell, it's the smell of gold, baby. Gosh, I sure am tired, but I don't like any coffee or any of those other nuclear energy drinks. If only I could be, be, if only I could be, alert with the squirt, alert with the squirt, alert with the squirt. Squirt. It's brilliant. Let me quit. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I couldn't help overhearing you overhearing it. I think I have a solution that might work for everybody, okay? Um, check this out. I just came up with this. I think it's going to work, though. Well, you leave for work and you're feeling the hood because your wife said she's not coming home anymore. Well, get a look. Then have a squirt, get to work on time. Who needs a wife anyway? A dripping and a drop. Where's that no good Wallace Crestfall? Hmm? Is that him? Where is he going? Serenian, sir. Serenian? <laughs> then you get me a ship that can get to Serenian just as fast as can be. Give me what he has. Huh? What's he have? I want it. We rent Speeder, sir. We He chartered a Celestial Vixen X8, sir. A Celestial Vixen X8? <laughs> yeah, I like the sound of that. Get me one of those. We're out of those, sir. Are you kidding me? What do you mean you're out of those? Yeah, in fact, we're just about out of everything. We do have a nebula bats, but as you know, the winged nebula bat does not match the speed of no, a... Br let me get one thing straight, real quick, like. I come in here, I ask you where Wallace Crestfall is, you point at the sky, you tell me that he's chartered a Celestial Vixen X8, and then I, in turn, say to you, then get me one of those Celestial Vixen X8 things, and then you respond back to me, we're all out of those. Are you kidding me? I could order from the outpost, but it would... Give me a freaking nebula bat. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Hammonds, we're in for a routine physical today. Just a wellness check, is it, y'all? That's the ticket, Doc. I haven't been taking my vitamins like I'm supposed to, and I smoked three cigarettes last weekend at Carol's party. <laughs> but I don't regret it, if you know what I mean. P-A-R-T-Y. Okay, okay, uh, let's tone it down a little bit, okay? Tone it down? Is this such a thing? I've been exercising regularly. I'm drinking kombucha after my mindfulness Wednesday. For Pete's sake, we have ailing patients on the premises, Mr. Hammonds. Sorry. Open and say, ah. Uh, I swear it, Trevor. If you don't comply with my wishes at this very moment, I will be forced to melt you into your favorite beverage. So what's it gonna be? Yes or no? Uh, no. <laughs> what's your favorite beverage, Trevor? Uh... Slushy, I guess. Then a slushy you shall be. We're gonna have to let you go, Gabe. Let me go? You're firing me? Why? I don't know, Gabe. I believe it may have to do with our numbers being off again. That's two months in a row they've not added up. And you've only been with us for two months, so... I... Numbers off, huh? By a smidge, yes. And by a smidge, I mean by a lot. Look, I came clean, 
and told you that I don't know math. Yeah, well, we all thought you were joking. Because, you see, Gabe, your resume paints a beautiful picture of someone who has a rich and nuanced background in accounting. But you seem to have no accounting talent whatsoever, which leads me to, well, like I said, we're going to have to let you go, you know, because of uh, the fraud and all. Look, I may not know numbers, but I do know that this whole stinky hoodwink here doesn't add up. Well, Gabe, you, you don't know how to add. <laughs> well, there's something fishy about this whole ambush, I'll tell you that. Well, perhaps you should pursue a career in fish. And it is with that very notion that we must forge our powers of deduction, not just with scholarly fellowship of mutual pursuit. For the annals of evolutionary thought have illuminated the paths of our ancestors to scream from the mountaintops. We did not evolve from random chance, but instead, by what evolutions were advantageous. And that is the word here. Advantageous. We would not be so naive to claim that nature chose randomly the evolutions of living beings. No, but through the tenacity of the living organism and the whims of the unknown laws greater than ourselves, Man and nature have indeed settled into a negotiation of what is advantageous. So I want to thank you so much for having me here today, and I would like to open the floor up to questions. Why bird poo-poo, why? What's the matter, Susan? Uh, the bank charged me an overdraft fee. Ooh, that really leaves my refrigerator yeah. door open, letting yeah. all the cold air out. And they assured me my check deposit would be processed before the charges. Oh, if that don't rip the E key yeah. right off my keyboard, the most frequently used letter. I went down there, I pleaded with them, they refused to see reason. A gigantic splatter of bird poop yeah. all over my recently yeah, washed yeah, car. Yeah. I even talked to the manager. He was no help. Stubbed my barefoot yeah. toe on the edge of the yeah. couch. All I said was, sometimes these things happen. Dang nabbit, if that ain't like learning, your hit went south and the target's still alive and you gotta go back and kill him again. What? I'm just saying it's frustrating, that's all. What's this uh, manager feller's name at the bank? Why? Give me the name, Susan. <laughs> Teresa with Intergalactic Assistance. Thank you for holding. Who am I speaking with? Oh, thank God. Oh, my name. Oh, my name is Terry. Terry, how may I help you today? I've already explained it twice. I was making some repairs to the heat shield on my cruiser and I accidentally stepped on the thrust valve. It broke. The pressure release bugged me off. The hull now is stranded. They transfer me to you. I need a tow. I need a tow. Can you jetpack back to the ship, Terry? No. No, the jetpack's acting up. And now I'm drifting out into open space. How much is left in your air tank, Terry? About 45 minutes now. So we need to hurry. 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 <coughs> and where are you? Nebula Prairie Quadrant B9. Nebula Prairie is far out there. The nearest tow is about two hours away. I don't have two hours. I, don't to be, I, I spent 20 minutes on hold to talk to you. I understand, Terry. I'll see if we have anything closer. No, no, put me on hold. Please hold. <laughs> My name is Bill with Intergalactic Assistance. Thank you for holding. Who am I speaking with? You're speaking to Terry. Terry, how may I help you today? It's <laughs> just for me to you. I'm drifting into open space. I'm running out of time. I need a troll. No problem, Terry. Where are you? Nebula Prairie Quadrant B9. Good night, that's far out west of nowhere. Terry, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to transfer. No, you. don't pull me out! Oh!